So hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I've got a really exciting tutorial for you guys today. We're going to build a full stack Internet of Things app using Arduino, Expo, and Node.js. This tutorial is going to come in three parts or three videos, I guess you could say. So if you're watching this and uh, this video has just come out, you're probably going to have to wait a couple weeks for uh, part two and three to come out because I'm doing each of these tutorial videos one by one. Uh, first one is going to be building our Arduino device. Second one is going to be setting our mobile app up for push notifications. And third one is building out the server to actually send those push notifications. Okay, so I'm going to cut over really quickly right now uh, to show you guys what we're going to be building. So today we're going to be building an app that sends you a push notification when the soil gets dry on your plant. So the only way I could really simulate the soil drying out here was to pull out the sensor. So I'm going to do that now. So now that that's happened, um, we're going to get a signal in the Arduino. It's then going to send that um, to the server to let us know that the plant's dry. And as you can see, the push notifications come in on Android and iOS. So that was pretty cool, wasn't it? I actually forgot to show uh, there's some UI that we're going to be doing as well. Um, I'm going to show that off to the side here. Uh, but before we get started, I just want to quickly highlight the fact that most of you guys aren't subscribed. Uh, it's actually a pretty big difference. If you could like and subscribe and maybe even comment, I'd be really thankful. Uh, it really helps support the channel and uh, me bringing these tutorials to you. Another thing I want to talk about before we get started really quickly is actually the materials that I used so that if you guys want to go out and buy them and try things out, you can do that as well. I'm going to be leaving links to these uh, products in the description as well, but I thought you might want to see them really quick before we get started. The first, of course, is an Arduino Uno R4 uh, Wi-Fi version. I'm not sure if I can get it in the shot, but it's kind of cool because it actually has a built-in ESP32, which is really nice. I'm also going to be using a capacitive soil moisture sensor. Uh, again, a pretty cool thing, very cheap and uh, just some jumper wires on that. Nothing too crazy or special. Uh, finally, again, nothing special, but uh, just a USB to USB-C cable so that I can hook up the Arduino R4 to my laptop and that I can uh, upload the program. Okay, so that's everything. Um, let's get started, guys. Okay, so let's put everything together. We'll start with our capacitive soil moisture sensor. Uh, so when you get it, it'll come like this uh, with the female connectors and what you're gonna to wanna to do is have some kind of like double mail um, jumper wires you can use in order to um, connect it to the Arduino. I like to kind of match them up. Uh, so in this case, red is power. So I'll plug my red jumper into there. Black is usually ground. So I'll plug my black jumper into there. And I couldn't get a yellow to match, um, but this is where the analog signal comes in. I'm just gonna make it green uh, for ease of use. So on the side of your Arduino, if you haven't done Arduino before, you'll see that there's a ground and a five volt and a zero. You're gonna wanna plug power into five volt, ground into ground, and then our analog into the analog connector. So it should look something like this. There's my um, power connected to the five volt. There's my black cable connected to the ground. And there's my jumper wire connected to A0. So when you power this, um, in this tutorial, we're gonna be powering it through USB. Uh, there's other ways you can power it. Uh, feel free to look those other powering ways up on YouTube. I'm mostly just going to focus on um, programming this thing today because there's lots of different ways to power it and I don't want to get uh, too into that. So um, all right, let's jump into the coding. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is go to arduino.cc slash en slash software. On this page under downloads, you're going to see um, Arduino IDE, the newest version. Uh, that's the version that you're going to want to download and use for this project. So next, let's actually create the project. Um, I'm going to make a directory. I'm going to call it plant sensor yt. I'm then going to cc into this directory. Inside of here, I'm going to create a couple files. The first one is Arduino secrets. This is going to be used to hold things like your Wi-Fi password. 
And then the other thing I'm going to do is create another file called plant sensor dot, oh, sorry, plant sensor yt dot ino. And this is going to be used in order to be the root of the actual Arduino project. At this point, um, you can open the folder using open dot. And if you double click on the sensor project, uh, it should open Arduino IDE right to the place that you want to see it. Okay, so once you've got your IDE set up, the next thing you want to do is press Command Shift E. This will open the file tree so you can toggle between the different files really easily. At this point, I want you to notice in the top left, uh, this little box here, it may say select your board if you haven't selected an Arduino yet. Uh, that means what you have to do is you have to plug it in. I'm going to plug this in on my side. And then when you hit this drop down, you should see Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi as the option uh, that you want to pick next. Okay, so now that we're done with the setup, let's actually fill in our secrets. Uh, remember we're using C++ here, so you're probably going to see some syntax you're not familiar with. Um, define is how we create constants. Uh, the first is going to be my Wi-Fi network and my Wi-Fi password. Um, I'm going to, of course, not write those down because those are for my house. And um, you'll, of course, fill in these strings with what they are for um, wherever it is you live. I'm also going to do this for the web address and for my um, host. Remember to fill these in with values that are relevant to your own house and your own server. And that's it. Okay, so let's go on to making the actual product. We're gonna start by importing string. We're then going to import the Wi-Fi library that comes with the um, R4 Wi-Fi. And we're going to import our secrets. At this point, we're gonna copy our constants into the actual main file. You'll notice I'm using char array and not string. That's because there's some values that need to be compatible with C. Even though we're in C++, um, back in the days when C was at prominence, they didn't have like a built-in string type, they just had character arrays. And so sometimes we have to use character arrays for C instead of um, the C++ string, that's a little easier to work with. So to access the Wi-Fi client, we can just define it like this. And we're gonna do a couple methods, setup and loop. These are required by Arduino in order to run. Setup, of course, is what happens when it's set up, and loop is sort of your main method. Serial so Begin 9600 allows me to access um, console logs from the actual Arduino, which is really useful for debugging. And basically what I'm going to do is once the um, logs are opened up, I'm going to start connecting to the um, actual Wi-Fi. So I'm going to just start the Wi-Fi module with my Wi-Fi name and password and I'm gonna give it a little bit of time to connect, about 10 seconds. So uh, here's how we're gonna test if it's connected. If it's not connected, we're gonna print out this log that says that the uh, Wi-Fi is not connected. So if it doesn't disconnect, uh, it means everything's all good. And if it does disconnect, we're just gonna do a forever loop. So I'm gonna hit run and this is gonna compile. And then I'm gonna open up, oh, Oops, I made a syntax error. I forgot to define status. <laughs> so the default status is uh, the built-in one, uh, idle status. Okay, so I'm gonna recompile now and I'm gonna open up the serial monitor so that I can view the logs from my Arduino on my computer. Uh, not the serial plotter, whoops. Yeah, there's the serial monitor. And once this is done compiling, I'll check that. And we see connecting to Wi-Fi and we don't see it stopping. Very good. Uh, we're ready to go on to the next steps. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually um, get the sensor data from our soil moisture, uh, capacitive soil moisture sensor. <laughs> so um, in order to do that, we need to create an execute request method. And we also need to define the interval um, like how often we actually want to send um, our signal to the server to say, I found a sample from the uh, moisture sensor. So inside of our loop method, that happens several times per second, we want to create an unsigned long, which um, 
will be used to retrieve the current amount of milliseconds the program has been running. I am then also going to create a few global variables to help track some state. Uh, the first is going to be the soil moisture value, which is the value given to us by the sensor. Um, I'm probably going to do that a little bit later, but I'm going to just put it there for now so we don't have to scroll up and down. I'm then going to keep track of the previous milliseconds on the previous iteration of the loop. And I'll make those zero and make it a long actually instead of an int because the long can hold a much bigger integer and time is quite a large integer. And I'm going to copy paste that down here. So I'm just going to do a quick calculation and I'm going to see if we um, enough time elapsed that we could do another um, iteration of the signal. And if it has, then we're going to um, execute our web request. And I'm going to make this into an else if because it's kind of an error check now. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is actually grab the value from the sensor. And if you remember, it was A0. So I just say analog read on A0. And that sets the integer for us. It's that easy. Next thing I'm going to want to do is pass that into my execute request method. And I just add the parameter. And then add the parameter here. And that's all set. So this next part is going to be kind of tricky because we have to write our entire packet from scratch. Uh, but basically we're going to connect to our server first. Um, we're going to make a string, which is going to be the start of our JSON payload. And uh, again, we have to do it all manually. So we have to remember to escape everything properly. Luckily, we can use the C++ string here to build our string. We don't have to manipulate a bunch of character arrays. Uh, we then convert our moisture value to a string so it can be in the JSON. And then we'll say the end of the payload ends with the user ID. The user ID is going to be used later on to fetch a token for push notifications. But for now, you don't have to worry about that. Um, you can just set it to what I set it to here. And to create the actual payload, we're just going to put all three parts of that together. Next thing we're going to do is start creating the packet. So um, the content length is going to be the length of the payload. Next, the um, content is going to be the content start, the content end. I'm now just going to do a print for debugging's sake, just to say that um, we're going to start sending the moisture reading at this point. And I'm going to print out the content there. You'll notice I'm converting these things to C strings. That's because um, some methods can't take C++ strings in Arduino, so uh, we have to convert them to legacy C strings. So to build our packet, we start with post, and I'm using this simple print on this sample uh, server. I then put the host in. I make the connection keep alive. You've probably seen all this before if you've debugged much in uh, your Chrome browser. And so I'm going to accept JSON and my content type is going to be application JSON. I'm then going to plug in my content as a legacy C string. And do the same thing with the payload. And finally, I'm going to print that I have sent the reading at this point. Okay, so I'm going to compile and see if uh, we have any errors. Okay, and we don't. Good. So I'm going to run a server here, and I'm going to see if um, the actual values from the Arduino get sent to my server. So uh, I'm going to hit upload, and let's see if it all compiles and works. And you can see some. it's connecting to Wi-Fi. There's a bit of a, a dump there from one of my old runs of this. But if I open the terminal, we should eventually see it actually send data to my server. And it does. So this is the Arduino sending real data to my real backend web server, which is pretty cool. 
If I put my finger on the sensor, you see the moisture level goes down. If I do it, if I lift it off, it goes up, which means it's more dry. Uh, this is working guys, and ready to go on to the next step where we um, contact a real server. One last important thing I want you guys to remember is to increase this post interval number. Uh, it's definitely not high enough as it is now, and you don't want to break your own server, or worse yet, break like the expo servers or something like that. So what I want you to do uh, before you leave today is take this value and actually increase it to um, 3 million 600,000 because that's the number of milliseconds in an hour so that you don't cause problems later on when you want to hit other servers. So that's everything guys. Until next time, happy hacking.